Hello and welcome back to Video Games. I'm Tim Rogers, you were watching Kotaku.com, and today we are playing John Wick Hex. Get ready to get wicked with me and special guest, Director Mike Biffle. Hello. Talk into the microphone. Talk into the mic. That would the help, mic wouldn't The it? microphone is the good way to talk. I like it. How how deep in... Do I go in this deep air? Are we doing this... Uh, Hello. Uh, hi, and welcome to... Uh, if you had been here before, I would ask you if you're back. However, you've not been here before. I'm thinking I'm back. You're thinking you're back, but are you back? The music is very loud for dramatic effect, by the way. In case anyone in the chat was about to point out, Oh my god! We're here with football! Is John John Wick is sort of football, right? I think in in many ways all things are football, right? It's a little bit. Everything is football. Everything God is loves football. football. God loves football. Uh, God's children love football. All God's children enjoy a little bit of football. John Wick is a John Wick Hex is a, a tactics game. It is. And uh, there's nothing more tactical mm. than good old American football. <laughs> so in a way, you have made the true successor. To Madden. That's what we were going for. That's what we set out to do. Is it more football or is it more rugby? I would say it's more football. Oh, that's excellent. Because there's more, uh, well, you guys have armor on, which is... Put that on the tin, and that's the end of our intro. <laughs> oh, no, the intro was not timed as perfectly well as it usually is. This is seamless. Whoa! Oh, look, it's a video game. Whoa, it's John Wick Hex. And it is, uh, just to tell everybody on the stream, it is available now. Is that true? I believe so. On, uh... The Epic Store. The Epic Store. Real good store, that Epic Store. You, you ever tried that out? I've, I've given it a go. <laughs> you can download Fortnite on there. Did you know that? I've heard that, which also has John Wick in it. It's got Fortnite. Oh, yeah, John Wick is in Fortnite. John Wick is in Fortnite. So it makes sense that he's a, for now, an Epic Games Store exclusive. We're all just, we're all just in the extended Fortnite universe, ultimately. Everything is going to be in Fortnite. In Fort what if they put every announce that every Smash Bros. character is in Fortnite? They can't exactly put a Fortnite character in Smash, if you know what I mean, because what is a Fortnite character? Get owned, Fortnite. That's all I have I'm not to engaged say. with that. No, yeah. You're right. <laughs> That's all I we're, we're not going to go any deeper into that. Ex wait, uh, anticipate my full review of Fortnite coming someday. I keep teasing that. We're going to do that. So, uh, the you're all in the chat. Feel free to ask questions mm -hmm. um, uh, as we play. So, we're going to go ahead and if anyone watched my dead stream, off stream, I've been encouraged. That's just a to let's play, a, right? A let's play. That's a let's well, play. A let's play has to be. Editing, though, right? No, not usually. Well, I no. feel like they used to, right? I think that, well, we used to have standards as, as people, didn't we? But, you know, things have slid. And we used to really, really just love life. Mm. And we used to live it as mm. we did so. I'm liking how upbeat this is already. It's good. We're off to a good start. We're having we're having a very good time. So here's what we're going to do. You So if you watched my little, we're just going to call it a let's play. If you mm. watched that, you saw me play the first chapter slightly poorly. So what we're going to do today yeah. is... Uh, Designer, director, producer, developer, writer, mastermind. Are you all of those things for those? Costume designer. No, that's not true, actually. We actually did have... We had both a costume designer and a uh, a consulting tailor for this project, which is oh, a great incredible. credit to having a video game. Yeah. Oh, my God. Tailor for a video game. It's got to be done. If you're doing John Wick, you got to take this stuff seriously. Did you have a tinker, a soldier, and a spy as well? We we did, but they killed each other <laughs> very early in development, so we didn't put them in the credits. Oh, very good. Out of good. respect, you know. Very good. So let's go ahead and uh, you're going to continue where I left off yesterday. You're going to inherit my mistakes. Okay. Whatever mistakes of mine, it is possible to inherit from just the tutorial level. So click on that continue. Let's do it. Do you like how I gave you <laughs> advice on where something was in the I end? like it. So how do you play this game then? Is this... You click on stuff and uh, get rowdy. I'm clicking on this. It's not working. Some games are pick up and play. This game is pick up and heck yeah. <laughs> Hex yeah. Hex yeah. Go on and click on that. Hey, that's a hexagon. It is. It all comes together, right? Oh my god! It's like poetry. It rhymes. Oh, I think I, uh, I think we accidentally did not spend your continental coins. That's okay. I'm so a you're gonna have to go in with no buffs. That's okay. I got. So this. We're, we're 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 making it hard for him here. So basically, it's if you watched uh, any videos about this before, it is a tactics strategy game based in the world of John Wick, where you play as John Wick. And no human in the real world can think as fast as John Wick. Not even me. Not even a race car driver. Mm. And those guys are sick. So John Wick can... Uh, so you get to simulate his, his decision-making process in this game. And you get to see how many tenths of a second, two tenths of a second, an action is going to take. 
then you have a very small move set that does not grow if i'm to believe it, the, the move set does not grow very much if at all no we thought it the problem we had and it's you know it's part of the mythology is john wick's already john wick it felt a bit weird to have like him leveling up and yeah and getting like now you can jump twice as high it's like he's john wick already it's john wick's not going to get the double jump he's never going to get that double jump he's ne he doesn't need it he doesn't need it so i deleted one comment so far on my youtube video of this which was what is the blood pink uh, it's because they're all Vulcans. No, Klingons, damn it. <laughs> damn it. Oh, no, I think it's pink because it looks cool. I've lost cooler. the audience. I've lost the audience. It looks cool. It right? does look cooler. That's the thing. Yeah, we've got that kind of pink neon thing going on. I'd watch a Star Trek movie directed by the people behind John Wick. Tarantino's doing one, right? He, he like, he... That blood will be red. Did he write the story for I, it? I think they... Isn't there that rumor that... I don't know. I think he wrote the... He, like, wrote the story, but not the screenplay. Okay. And he's going to direct it, but it's not a Quentin Tarantino film. You have expertly approached this door. Thank you. That's the thing with uh, with John Wick. He, he does know how to walk towards a door. You'll notice you can move the camera in and out. You can rotate. I do that a little too much. I don't know if that's annoying to the audience. I didn't move the camera in and out during my video, and someone chided me for it. Did they? Yeah. They said, why don't you zoom out, bro? And I was like, I don't know. I'm in here making content under threat of uh under threat of going hungry i mean you're I mean, you're the real you're the real star as a as a streamer as an online personality ultimately you're doing the real work the real work the of real playing work, the video game playing the video game exactly i'm gonna tell you what i made video games for about 15 years before i oh I'm, i started. apologize i did not know that oh you did not uh i you know i tweeted at you a couple of times a couple years ago while did you I were ignore working. it or did i i think attention? i think you ignored it but i would have ignored it too i ignore okay. almost every tweet i fucked me. up here by the way i don't know oh that's good because okay. john wick is all about making mistakes it's true like for example what what he did at the end of john wick chapter two shouldn't have done that because he, he should have known that the adjudicator was going to come after him because the adjudicator's oh. a narc he should have known I, I, I got distracted. Though. Oh, J.I.D. This is good. This is good. This is good. We're going to learn and grow. We're going to learn and grow. Heal and grow. Serenity now. So I, I tweeted at you to be like, when you were making Thomas Was Alone, I was making a game called uh, Video Ball. And I was like, yo, we got solidarity. Guys making games about geometric shapes. I that just was, ignored it. That was pretty much all I had. And uh, I mean, I actually, I did a few lectures about how it's easy to how you can even give geometric shapes, personality, and such. That would never work. That would Though, never work. No. Yeah, the, your game did more of it than mine did. So, congratulations. I like that game. Thank you. That was. I, I always feel like whenever anyone compliments me for that, that's so much of that is down to Danny uh, doing the voice acting. Oh, yeah, that voice like, acting that was spectacular. That performance is amazing, yeah. How do you get somebody to sound so, uh, what do you call it, English? Uh, well, what you do is you uh, you find someone English. Oh, that's the. That's where a lot of people go wrong. Is they just make them that way. <laughs> they, we, it's just what we do. It's just what we do. Yeah. So someone in the chat is saying this looks like Metal Gear Acid Two without that cards. That is a, that is the nicest compliment anyone could pay me. So let's let's talk about influences here. So first sure. of all, this is this game is is a tactics game and it's set in the world of John Wick. And as I believe the conversation, the horse that's been beaten almost to death as the man shot in the head from a horse while John Wick rode a horse in John Wick like Chapter it. 3 Parabellum. The horse that's been beaten a little tiny bit here is a tactics game with John Wick. Shouldn't it be like a shooter? As I played the game for the first time, I was surprised it wasn't a third person shooter. I shouldn't insult all the wonderful, lovely reviews we've had. That's incredibly <laughs> unprofessional. Yes, no, I, well, I think that's the kind of the the expectation for sure. I've got turned around here. Go yeah. This way. Um, yeah. I uh, I think that's the expectation. We just honestly walked in and said no, that wouldn't work. That was our kind of our. There wasn't really much of a back and forth because. Yeah. Because I'm clumsy. I circle strafe. I can I can make a game where you run around in circles and there's neon, but that's not going to feel like John Wick to me. And I kind of I've so, always, I, if I was going to do John Wick, I wanted to do proper John Wick. You know, get it right. So they came to you. The they opportunity did. came to you somehow. I assume. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, they were uh, the 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 publisher, Good Shepherd. I think they'd been talking to Lionsgate about maybe doing something with John Wick, and then a uh, producer called uh, Ben Andak, a good friend of mine. He um, he went in and he basically said, "Look, like let's let's do something weird with one of those pretentious indies, uh, and that might be interesting and lead something that that's surprising or different." 
Um, and he came to me, and they uh, they they liked it. I flew to Hollywood and was like, You're, "You think you won the third person shooter, but actually, let me make you a pretentious." Were they uh, aware of uh, Were they aware of Midway's classic game, John Woo's Stranglehold? I don't believe they were. Oh um, man, because if they if they'd known about that, I would not have won the argument. Right? They, if they'd known about that, they would have known that it could be theoretically done. John Woo's Stranglehold. I love that game to to god darn pieces, but John Woo movies are not. John Wick movies are, they tribute, they pay tribute a little bit to John Woo, but More not. so as they go on, right? They become more, because um, Chad's a massive anime fan. So oh, yeah, so yeah. So a lot of that kind of comes in as it goes on. They're entrenched in themes of honor and uh, mm -hmm. glorious revenge and glorious bloodshed or whatever it's called. So they're, they're, they're all full of stuff like that. But John Wick is more, it's more balletic. Oh, can we watch the replay? Oh, you skipped. Oh, the... I skipped it. We'll watch the replay of the next one. We'll do the next one. These Sorry replays about that. are good. So John Wick's gunplay is is more just the fight choreography, the gunplay. It's all so smooth and seamless, and it's it's like watching a speed run of a John Woo movie. Is the way I I pitched hmm. it. Yeah, it's very efficient. Someone. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, we've got Lance Reddick yes, talking here. That of the and Ian. And we've got Ian McShane. Oh, that's so great. Have you? So you've met these individuals? Yeah, I directed them. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. What? How does it feel to? So you wrote these words as well? I did write the words. Okay, well, I, 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 I wrote the words, and then obviously on the day you always kind of tweak things and get them right. So I don't. I never take full credit, but yeah. I, I looked into it and made sure that you had uh, you had said something about writing. The words. <laughs> uh, I, I asked it as though I didn't know. That's that's an interview technique. It's anyway, very clever. You you lulled me in there. I invented the, that. You that invented technique. that. I'm the first what guy you, to ever do that. What do you call it? I call it the. Uh, <laughs> I call it the Colombo. It's good. It's the Colombo maneuver. Just one so, more thing. So the, uh, um, Ian McShane, what's that guy like? That's that's a question I have written down. <laughs> He's the next question. <laughs> it's Lance Reddick. What's Ian McShane what's that like? Guy like? What's, He's, like? No, he's really cool. He was really cool. He he uh we we recorded it just one morning in LA. Um and yeah, he he showed up and we we chatted and yeah, no he's he was genuinely really great. He had um he, he had like a note about a stage direction that he I had in a stage direction uh Winston drinking a uh a whiskey and he was he said Winston does not drink whiskey. And that and what was, does Winston drink? He drinks a martini or uh, a brandy occasionally. I think he drinks a brandy in the new one. Um, but yeah, once we got past, let's throw this gum, bam. There we drink go. errors. Once we got past the drink errors, we were uh, we were off to the races. But no, he was great and just, yeah. I Did mean, that's the great thing is these guys know these characters because they've played them three times, right? So you, you're ultimately just trying to go in and not mess it up. Did you uh, did did you tell Ian McShane that I liked him in Julian Fellows as Doctor Thorne on Amazon Prime? I specifically said that to him. Well, then why didn't you also get him to sign my Deadwood Blu-ray box? I had it in my bag. I just didn't. I was. I did. I must admit. Well, that was the best moment. Was like after we'd recorded. So he's playing Winston, and Winston's a very kind of very classy guy. Very much kind of plays by the rules, and is is, is who he is. But the um, but we you know you get Ian McShane in a recording booth. You want to hear him swear, right? Oh yeah. So at the end of it, we actually uh, uh, Ben, the producer, just like led over to me, and obviously you're kind of you're muted, so the actor can't hear you. And was like, Mike, you've got to get him to swear a little bit. So we actually went through. I just let I just I <laughs> unmuted. And I was like, Ian. You just wrote a couple Deadwood line copy. Well, no, I, was, I literally said, Ian. Well, everyone out here is a massive Deadwood fan. Could you just swear a little bit for us? And it was clearly not the first time you'd been asked to do this. And I have this, um, so I have this amazing like three minutes of Ian McShane saying just the most horrific shit. It's, great. it's like getting Yo Yo Ma in your in your house. Exactly. I think Ian McShane has one of the three best voices in acting today. Who who are the other three? Um, I like Ralph Innocent, who who's, uh, who's that? he he was uh, he was in the movie. Have you seen The Witch? Oh, I've not yet. That's the the, the, was, the was, Vitch, right? With the, the, the two Vitch, the, the Vitch. Yeah, the he's Vitch, he's yeah. the father in the Witch. He's also a minor character on Game of Thrones, much like Ian McShane, who was a uh, on was in one, one episode. Wasn't he? Yeah, one and done. He was very good in that episode. He was. Oh my god, the guy can't be not good in anything. He's he's fantastic. So, who's the who's the third best voice? Oh, we'll leave that one up to interpretation. He's probably a, a British man because uh, they they've got well developed voices. So here's the replay. So you get to watch the John Woo scene, John Wick scene, that you just, it's another John W. You get to watch the J-Dub scene that you just choreographed. Mm. So the game is about choreography. That's right. Now where'd you get the idea for this? 
Um, honestly, just from in terms of like what the replay or in terms of like doing choreography of the game. Well, um, I guess with the chicken and egg then, which which one was first? It was the it was from the start. It was I I've, I've always like one of the things I said to the filmmakers when I first met them was it's when you're watching John Wick, you're half watching it just as a, a cool action movie, but on the other on the other half, you're watching it. Um, with an admiration for like the craft of the stunt work and, and how good the actors are at what they're doing and how, how great those performances are. Yeah, every um, single minute maneuver is so clearly workshopped and polished and oh, programmed like, into every, every single scene. Yeah, so so I wanted to make a game that, like, I knew we'd get the story side of it right because I, I felt we could tell a good story and get great music and art and do all that. But I really wanted to make sure we made a game that kind of front-loaded the stunt team stuff and kind of gave you the opportunity to create those performances and and what well, i think actually that was one of the things that kind of connected with the filmmakers because you know the 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 studio guys they were they were happy to have a, a cool looking john wick game but i think once i started talking to chad who's the director and the stunt team and all of those guys the fact that we were like respecting the craft that they were all kind of building these movies around that that got us into so many more rooms and got us kind of you know to the point where we were like training with the guys and the stunt team is playing the game and giving us feedback on how to like better f make a John Wick fight scene. So oh, that's that fantastic. Yeah. Did you get motion capture from anybody? So I didn't, and that was conscious because the problem with motion capture, like I'm sure you got to go all the way. Well, it's it's when you're when you're. I'm sure it's easier in AAA, but like at the indie end of motion capture, the 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 mocap uh, mocap works into one of two ways. Either essentially you've got like Wii remotes strapped to your wrists and like like motion detectors on you, or you've got these white dots that cameras pick up. Yeah. And if you've got uh, characters punching each other, the two things that will happen is either they'll block the white dots because they'll just move. They're so close to each other they'll move in front of each other. Or if they're if they're wearing the motion sensors, they'll shake the sensors because, and that will throw off the data. Yeah. So if you're doing mocap at the indie end of things, you have to do no non-contact uh, fighting, which is never going to look good, and you end up having to do so much work to make that clean in the game. You might as well just animate from from first principles with an animator, and our animation team just kind of you know, did uh, it from scratch instead. Obviously, these big time AAA studios spend even more money than the the uh, typical person would think they spend on motion capture to get stuff right in those yeah. games. But it still looks fantastic. I, I was commenting on my stream that when I just kind of ham-boned my way through the first mission and watched the replay of it, I was like, oh my god, I'm, I I just choreographed the worst John Wick scene ever. <laughs> right? It's like, this is this is the worst John Wick fight scene I've ever seen. And then there was just no way for me to not be conscious that that was my fault though and it made well, me want good. to do it better and that's and that's honestly that's what we're always going for is it's not an easy game but hopefully when you have your ass kicked it's it's a dumb mistake that you you know you could have done better with that's always the hope anyway i mean as far as strategy tactics games go this one is i almost want to say it's obscenely technical down to the number of things and gauges that are there on the screen and that owes a lot to the limited moveset you have a very limited moveset so there are yeah. all these mitigating factors like focus you spend focus to dodge it how many seconds does it take game seconds to refocus uh refocusing i'd have to hover it's 1.1 seconds 1.1 seconds which to isn't refocus. long but it's just enough that it's kind of and we spend a lot of the deep breath yeah those timings obviously like the amount of balancing you do to make those timings feel feel right and work with each other and and get that kind of rock paper scissors kind of interaction working is ridiculous so from my time in video game development and working at video game companies working in triple a and whatnot i've overheard a lot of conversations in which people talk about the dream game they would want to make mm. many people talk about wanting to make a sort of a lone gunman tactics game i've, I've heard this a couple of times okay. nobody's i i don't really know of any great examples of it i know there's games like hitman go which obviously yeah, board game it up a little bit and uh this game just playing this game I just remember hearing someone describe how their dream game was this kind of almost like a John Woo movie tactics game like 10, 15 years ago, right? Mm. And uh, just realizing why nobody actually makes that because it's very complicated. It's a it very heavy lifting filled act of game development. There are so many. Look at these, this obscene like you die amount. like that. Oh, you, you just die. What an idiot. 
this obscene amount of numbers flowing by at the top of the screen mm. where all this stuff you have to you have to play the timeline you have to know what your opponents are doing you have to know which actions you can interrupt you have to know that if you're in the middle of a movement action from one point to another that decreases the probability of an enemy's gunshot hitting you significantly i mean anything is significant when you're dealing with these little gambling dice rolls so i guess like what 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 tactics games do you like have you played were you influenced by multiple choice there yeah no I, well there's lots is the short answer like definitely in terms of what we were pulling on directly i guess the same stuff everyone is so XCOM obviously is this kind of prototypical thing uh but then like into the breaches when we looked at a lot uh, oh into the breaches off. fantastic yeah. and that's actually where a lot of the kind of the planning around enemies future moves was something that we're very different but like conceptually that was something that kind of came from there um and then of course um you know going way back to Radio, i you know it's it's there's there's bits and pieces from lots of things but i think honestly what how we got to where we are here but was by making a very generic turn-based game which was very XCOM that first prototype was that game yeah. um, and then realizing how terrible a John Wick game that was and having to fix it so it's a lot of this design is very um, very much kind of reactive to like fixing a bad game rather than I think necessarily like just kind of duplicating stuff we like from good games so you made pretty much a straight up one character XCOM we did yeah clone -ish pretty game. like the, the initial prototype was that and and like don't get me wrong like I'm glad we made that because it showed us how not to do it but it also oh, got sure. us it also got us the project which is cool lays a lot of groundwork yeah for exactly but it putting was, features in for sure but it was yeah it was not good and it was it was bad in all the ways that are really obvious to anyone who's like thinking about this idea for five seconds in terms of like you know you would you would choose you'd, you'd do your move and your action and then you'd watch five other guys do their moves and actions while John waited and got shot you know um but by doing that first, I think what we did was we found the worst version of the game. And I think probably, like, honestly, when you say to people, oh, we're making a John Wick strategy game, that's probably that's probably the version that's in those players' heads, right? That's the that's the kind of the bad version of this game. Yeah, they, they would I think when you the a lot of the the hurdle people have to jump over when they hear John Wick strategy game is mm. wouldn't that be too easy? Right? <laughs> is they it would, easy? Is they it would easy? think because wouldn't that be too easy to just be John Wick? You just shoot everybody? And you're just better. But John Wick is better than these guys at shooting. He has better aim than the typical yep. grunt. Right? He's he's a little bit better. He's a little bit faster than everyone. Yep. But it's not so much that you can you can get away with clearing a mission without actually putting in the effort to play the role of the character to think try to think the way he does. And that's actually one of the coolest things about the process. Like we we do a lot of playtesting. And you obviously, when you're doing playtesting, so that's just getting players in front of the game and asking them what they think. But the um, when we do that, we do kind of surveys on them before they play and get their thoughts and their feedback. And one of the questions we always asked was, do you do you like John Wick? Have you seen the John Wick movies? And what we found was there was this crazy correlation between how good players were at the game and whether they were John Wick fans. Because if you play the game having seen John Wick and understanding how he uses sight lines, how he works through a space, just on like an instinctive level, because you've seen the movies, uh, you're better at it. And that was the moment when we got that kind of data back from playtesting. That was the moment where the team was like, okay, we might actually have made an authentic John Wick game here, because that's... They grab that gun. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty darn authentic. I love the, the, the focus on sight lines. Like, you'll notice everyone can see the... The fog of war changing and morphing with every footstep. When you crouch, you can see significantly less yep. than when you're standing because you have a higher vantage point. High ground gives you just wild reach. And when someone disappears into those shadows, it's uh, they're just gone to you for that second. Yeah. And, and you have the... Uh, and I can't take credit for that. That's, that's directly from Chad, like me and Chad. Uh, in the edit suite, while he was cutting three, I, I went with the game to show him. And, and his feedback was my job. Because at that point, we didn't have any kind of sightline gameplay. We had it from, obviously, like, characters couldn't shoot you through walls. But, like, we didn't, we weren't, like, putting that in front of the player in a good way. Um, and he and he was and be and you could see enemies wherever they were in the map. And his feedback was, Mike John can't see through walls. You know this is unrealistic. And you know he was pitching ideas of like how he would fix that from a cinematic point of view of just kind of how he would change camera angles and stuff like that. Uh, and I suggested, I said, well, there's this thing called Fog of War that exists in games, and we could maybe play with that. Um, I still think Chad sort of thinks I invented Fog of War for this game, and I'm not going to correct him because. <laughs> 
because I will take credit for that. Oh, can you put on that replay? Someone in the chat says, it would be cool if you could watch your playthrough in real time once you beat the level. Like this. Well, buddy, here you go. We just added this in based on that feedback. Thank you yeah. very much. This took the, my, the my, my crack team of coders just added this in. It's, they must uh, be real good. They're real fast, yeah. How many how many programmers, coders were you working with on this? Um, It varied. So there were, I think on the credits, there's three. Uh, there was one guy who was there throughout, a guy called Nick Tringali, who's awesome. And then you had um, uh, Moo and Lottie kind of came in and, and did little bits and pieces uh, to help out as well. And did you use Unity for this? Oh uh, yeah, this is Unity. Oh, I love Unity. It's it's good to get. It's very fast to get stuff on its feet, which I like. Oh my God, John Wick. Have you noticed that the guy is a god darn killer? He's pretty good at it, isn't he? He overreacts. Uh, well, he doesn't over. He reacts appropriately. I don't know if that thing he did where he killed all those people because they killed his dog. I don't. I mean, that's. I don't know. I just got a dog. In preparation for playing this just game. Just to kind of get yourself into the headspace. And then I, because I avoid spoilers religiously, so I didn't know what time period in the John Wick timeline this was set in. And then oh, right. I discover it's a prequel, and now I'm like, well, I got this dog. What do I do with it now? Right, I'm going to get into the mindset. I'm going to get there. We, we actually, that was the that was the first kind of problem to solve was because the problem, not the problem, but a, qual a quality of the three movies is they're pretty quick after each other. Like the first and second movie, it's like a week where he's looking for the car. So you yeah. can't really make a game there. Second and third movie, you're talking like seconds. Yeah, he um, has like one, there's like one second. In exactly. fact, I think they overlap by a couple seconds. I think they do, yeah. I think they, they do even can kind of continue it in that way. Um, so, so, yeah. so yeah. we've got people in the chat. So in this, this game takes place before, and in this game, Winston and Caron have been captured by this guy named Hex. Mm -hmm. And Hex is telling them a story about John Wick. That's and right. that's the story. So John Wick actually never speaks in the game. That's right. And uh, so people in the chat have been asking, did oh, yeah. you get to actually meet Keanu? I've not had the pleasure, but what, what happens when you're working on like anything kind of related to John Wick is you just hear story after story about how much of a badass guy he is and how cool he is. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I, re I really want to. Um, Man, I, we'll I, see. I gotta we'll see say, guys. I, I like that guy. Yeah, that he's, guy's cool he's got a heck. great reputation. He's a he's a great guy. You seen that movie Man of Tai Chi that he directed? Oh, I, I don't think I did actually. Oh, no. it's fantastic! It really? is fantastic. Everyone should watch that. Um, it's it stars Tiger Chen and Keanu Reeves plays the bad guy. So my favorite Keanu Reeves meta story is, you know, he did all this kung fu training for the Matrix, and then he just kept up with it every day for the goddamn rest of his life. Really? That's incredible. That's like huge respect. I wish. I wish uh, Yan Wu Ping would come to my house and force me to get into <laughs> practicing kung fu. Well, they're all like, I mean, Chad's ex, uh, an ex. Well, he was Keanu's stunt double in uh, on the Matrix. Mm -hmm. So like they, so Ch so Chad is like, you know, very much going to the gym every day, working out. Like these guys take this stuff very seriously. You know who one of my favorite stuntmen was, and uh, um, one of my favorite actors in who appeared in John Wick One was uh, Daniel Bernhardt. Do you know Daniel Bernhardt? martial artist he does the mm -hmm. uh, the good grappling fight with keanu uh late in john wick oh yep yep, yep they, yep, they yep. do a really good grappling fight uh love that guy he was in an episode of barry uh, oh last yeah the season. uh yeah, yeah yeah the extended fight scene episode mm -hmm. everyone watch barry even if you don't like it just watch it until you see the episode <laughs> that that everyone likes that's daniel bernhardt my main man star of blood sport 4 one of the best movies ever made i love blood sport 4 and that's the end of that story. We don't need to keep talking about Daniel Bernhardt. He's from Switzerland, and he's wonderful. <laughs> that's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. Oh, my God. But, uh, yeah, Keanu Reeves. So, <laughs> what, else, what else do we have? Um, why are there no pencils in the game? So, this is, again, <laughs> so this is, and this is similar to the why can't you pet a dog conversation. Like, I love it, yeah. The kind of weird, super serious conversations you have when you're making a John Wick game. The problem with the pencil is the pencil's special, right? When you, mm -hmm. That's a great moment when he's talking about killing the three guys in the bar with a pencil. With a pencil. The problem is when you're making a video game, if you add a pencil to the game, you have to add 20 pencils to the game that are found uh -huh. in different situations and that have a hit chance and they're blah, 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 blah. And before you know it, essentially pencil-based kills are happening 50 times in the level and therefore they lose that mythic quality. Exactly. So there's lots of things that I had a lot of conversations with, like, with the film people of like, 
it's also about leaving out stuff. You don't want to have the scene where Han Solo chooses which gun he wants to have, and, oh, I think I'll wear this kind of trousers. If you're doing a prequel, <laughs> you don't want to have yeah. everything. So, yeah, we shied away from that side of it. Doesn't mean we wouldn't go back to it at some point, but, like, yeah, there's 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 no pencils in the game, and that's kind of a conscious choice. If only, you, See, you could have just made it so that the final boss, uh, there's a cutscene where he, he, it turns out this whole game is about the, the, the him killing men with the pencil. That's it. That's it. It's it's the it's the it's the, the pencil murderer. Is don't, the, don't tell me if steal I'm right. the pencil. That would be a great yeah. twist. There's that the whole game is about leading up to the anecdote of John Wick killing the people with the pencil. Yeah. How many people was it he killed with the pencil? Three in a bar. Oh. I actually knew the answer, but uh, you testing, was testing your John You're Wick testing knowledge. knowledge. I'm and, pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty good. Yeah, you've got it all, man. You know, I've only I'm going to confess I've only seen John Wick three once. Hmm. Uh, I went to see it once at the Alamo Draft House here in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, beautiful. Had a big old big boy bowl of popcorn. That first 15 minutes of that movie. So the first 15 minutes of John Wick, Chapter 3, I must have... And I mean, this is what's wrong. There's something wrong with my skull. I, I was cackling with laughter. <laughs> right? I mean, I feel like that's the right response, isn't it? It's just... He's just... There's so much killing. And I mean, it's it just, definitely a part of the franchise for sure. It just snowballs. With the killing is just so enormous, and I actually felt like I was like cramming for a final exam in like a history class, watching that first 15 minutes because there's so many kills that are all so new and so novel and unique and technical, and I'm just like, I gotta remember all of these. I need I need to fill the encyclopedia in my brain. So I yet lack an encyclopedia of John Wick three kills. My encyclopedia is incomplete. But I do plan on getting it. I'm out of bullets and I'm stuck in this boss fight. I am not going to survive this. Oh, you just got to find a pencil. That's what I need. Find a couple of pencils. I'm trying to work out what I need to do here. I might get lucky. Let's try. Nope. So we need a little sound bite for our viewers. Um, yep. So, and I mean, we need to play to like what, what <laughs> they, what they like. Sound bite. Yeah, go on. So... Basically, would you say, mm. just answer yes or no, confirm or deny, yes or no, would you say that this game, John Wick Hex, mm. is basically exactly the same as the Goose game, except it's turn-based, and you're a person, and you're killing people? I would say, by that criteria, <laughs> it's exactly the same as the Goose game. See, there you, go. there you go. Boom. That's all you need to know. And now you're ready for number one sales. So you wanted to know one thing I actually would like the most about this game? Go on. Was that if I could play it on a bus. That's and interesting. Then, then if I decided I didn't like it anymore or I got to the end of it, mm. I could press a button mm. and then press another button and then be playing Zelda. So like some kind of PC that you could take on the move with you. Would you in, could, have you thought of inventing some sort of a device like that? I don't. I don't think the technology's there yet. Uh, well, someday. One day. Someday. So, uh, well, one question that I, I believe gets asked a lot of video game developers. Mm-hmm. That uh, the, they often have the same answer to it. I hope, answer, I hope to stand out. Tell I, me the answer so I can. Give the, you a the answer one. is I just don't have the time, man. That was my. Uh, my cowboy voice. That sounded like a game developer. So the, yeah, most most game developers are halfway between. It's our platform. John Wayne unclear and, games console there. Sorry, carry oh, on. Man, carry yeah. on. Yeah. Most game developers are halfway between John Wayne and uh, uh, Indiana Jones. I think That's, in terms of how they talk. So that in, was, in, and, and, and in only in, in terms of how they talk. Yeah, they're, they're only right there. So the, the the question is, what games have you been playing lately? I mean, right lately, I've been playing a lot of John Wick X, uh, available now on the Epic Store. Available now. Um, what have I been playing recently? I've been, I, I, I was, I jumped on that Apple Arcade thing and worked my way through a few of those. That was my, that's the most recent one, so. Um, any, any standouts there? I, I love what the golf, man. I think that's great. WTG. Yeah. It's a golf game made by people who hate golf for people who don't know golf. Is I that what their it. tagline is? I, something it's something like that, like that yeah. Something I thought it's, it's just really creative. Just every, every level I smirk at a new idea. I like that. You know what I'll say? Yeah. It's irreverent. It, it is irreverent. But it is not irrelevant. That's good. That's my review. Solid. Yeah, pay me uh, tens of thousands of dollars, everyone, and I will I will copyright a commercial for you. And uh, then I will 
finally be able to pay off my back taxes. And I'll be able to go outside more than once a week. Which will be nice. You came out to find me in Times Square. Yeah, oh god, Times Square. That place. I gotta go out, I gotta walk out there every day. There's a theater next door. Where, uh... There's a Broadway show starts usually right around exactly the time I leave the office and there's just a line of people side-eyeing me for presumed cutting because mm. I'm trying to get through them. They're like, you're not getting my space. It's like, aren't the seats assigned in those theaters? I don't know. So you're in New York right now. You're like literally physically here. As far as I know. You were here for the... Uh, the Comic Con. NYCC, which is pronounced nice C. I see. Right? Yeah. So you were here for that. How yeah. was that? Fantastic? It was amazing. It's just so many, uh, so much exuberance in one. It is nice to be surrounded by people venue. who just profoundly love things. That's nice. There's no irony. There's no, um, yeah, it's nice. It's not the, uh, San, it's, it's got nothing on the San Diego Comic Con. That one's cool. I, I did that years ago. Yeah. But that's massive, massive, right? But they that take over terrifying. the whole town for that. Yeah. Like, I was there for... What was I there for? I was there with the BBC for a thing. Um, and I... Uh, so I got to go in the pri the backstage bit. I got to see Robert Downey Jr.'s yacht. That's a... Did you get to ride on it? I did not get to ride. I didn't even... He wasn't there. I saw it parked. I saw a parked yacht. That's... It's not as exciting a story as it might sound. Well, it's actually... It's not bad. It's this not is bad. A... It's it's an insight that so few of us get. What's what's the name of the yacht? Is it printed on the side of the I was yacht? Too, I was too distracted by the... Uh, the by Robert the, Downey Jr. Robert, of it? It, was, it was all very overwhelming. Yeah. Robert Downey Jr., another daily practicer of Chinese martial arts. I can believe that. He, he practices Wing Chun uh, boxing. He's been doing it for years. Huh. It's, uh, yeah, it's another thing you know about. You'll know it if you watch uh, those Sherlock Holmes movies where... Uh, his, oh, he's got his, the moves. Yeah, his technique is, like, indisputably real. It's like he's got the real technique down. It's wonderful. I like those dumb Sherlock Holmes movies. I call them dumb, but affectionately, you know? Well, I've heard people compare this game to that in that it is that kind of giving you a moment to think through a thing before he does it like it's yeah. got that slight vibe to it yeah you see sherlock holmes think in his uh you've seen the the sherlock holmes movie oh yeah 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 he like he like thinks through the all the boxing moves he's gonna do that's right it's wonderful i like those movies they're fun aren't they yeah no i do like those i wish there were like more of them i think they're making another one i'm not sure i cannot fail at my own game in front of an audience you can't do it this boss fight is tricky yeah Look at all those things up in that timeline, everyone. Just look at that. So yeah, so, so just in case people don't quite understand, this is these are all of the enemies on the screen right now doing their things. So you're kind of almost like video ads seeing they're each like a layer, which is quite It's cool. like a Adobe Premiere timeline. Exactly. So you can actually see the zero there in the midpoint. You can see the actions that have transpired, the two shoot actions. Pink actions are damage dealing actions, right? Uh, that's right, yeah. And white actions are like transitory actions. That's right, like a, like a, yeah, move, well, uh, so white is, uh, yeah, white is like a wind up or a, yeah, getting wind started. Up, wind up, cool down, movement. That's right. And Anything that doesn't gray is damage. kind of your movement, yeah, exactly. Anything that doesn't aspire to deal damage, because mm -hmm. pink things are not always things that did damage, right? I'm probably better off ducking the hell out of this room. Kill and you can crouch and roll and, uh. Uh, you can. Right now, oh, I'm no, just they're... mainly running. There's an individual right there. I got this. I got this. I'm going to use a takedown Take... to reposition here. Excellent. And grab a gun. Grab a gun. So you notice you grabbed the one with less ammo because it was marginally Close, closer. Uh, yeah, it's because like a slight, slightly better angle on that. Let's try that. Gets him like point, buys him like point four seconds there. Still got six health. I'm going to do, I'm going to use this wall to block him. I'm gonna Excellent. I'm going to shoot this guy. See, I'm building up a little tactical advice. Now that I'm thinking about it, now because I'm actually scared I'm going to fail my own boss fight on stream. This is good. You're I thinking am, like thinking like Wick. I'm thinking like Wick. He's running away because he's losing some focus and he knows he's in trouble. So, it's, uh, so this guy is going to get plunked. And he's down. That guy walked You did it. And that, let's watch the replay of that. I want to watch the replay. That one went on for a while, so that might not. This is going to be a graceless replay, potentially. <laughs> there is definitely a thing when you're playing this of, like, the first couple of times you're going for just, like, let's complete it. And yeah. we do see people who've played it a few times, like, doing their trying to get the replay looking as good as possible. Proof. It's a great mm. way of getting rid of a gun, just throwing it in someone's face. John Wick throwing the gun. Oh, my God. When I think John Wick, I think... Dude shooting dudes in the top of the head a lot. Mm. That's my favorite John Wick signature move. Kind of the right down. 
from above. Yeah, yeah just like does the hole just spike straight through the brain. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you get like all the vertical layers of the brain, right? To make sure no this cell is... can survive. Yeah, this conversation's upsetting me a little bit, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> John Wick, guy's a killer. He he is. He is. Oh my publisher have just logged into the into the stream. Good Shepherd. Good Shepherd. Shout out to Good Shepherd. Is that a Mass Effect reference or a Lost reference? Is the question. I I think in a way it's both. <laughs> I think. God, it's not even in the room with the boss yet. There we go. Oh, that boss is a big boy. He's a big boy. He's a That's big... Osborne. He is. Uh, he's a big guy. So I'm wearing him down a little oh, bit with some melee attacks, and then I'm gonna fight this character. So you're kind of crowd controlling the guys around him while. And he's just kicking him in the groin, just yeah, viciously. It's one thing you know in a fight is you go, if you're fighting a dude, you go straight for straight that groin. For groin. Well, that was something we like, because I remember when we first did that, <laughs> the animation of the groin, there you go. Boom. Of the groin attack was, um, that doesn't feel very John Wick, but what you realize when you go back and analyze these movies, as of course we had to, he does that. He, he It's a move he's not afraid to use. He gets right up in no, there. No, it, yeah. it works, right? Yeah, you can't be afraid of a... Uh, you can't be afraid of cheap shots if uh, somebody killed your goddamn dog mm -hmm. and stole your goddamn car, right? You would have feelings about that. Yeah, you would want to make sure that yeah. that they die screaming, <laughs> right? I mean, we've we've not really modeled the screaming of people dying in this game. Well, no, there's a couple of yeah, there's a couple of yells when they die actually. In fairness, I am low on health. I need to bandage up. Uh... Osborne's man cleared. I once wrote an article on uh, Kotaku.com back in about 2000. Uh, 2008 where i said yeah i've been i've been a freelance writer for this website for about 14 or so years and uh been only employed here full time for two years but i wrote an article where i said that if i shoot somebody in a game and they don't die they should scream yeah and i i, I basically took like four thousand words to explain this because i thought it was like this is profound yeah. a really funny joke yeah. to me i thought it was really funny <laughs> that a website would like pay a guy to write an article about how he thinks characters should scream if they get shot mm. and then i was at like gdc in like 2012 and some developer working at naughty dog was like oh yeah we made people scream because like you're, we liked that article yours and i was like okay it wasn't actually naughty dog it was a developer on the level of naughty dog okay. and i was like oh man did the did the power you wielded over the industry like did it, did, it, did it overwhelm you? Were you excited by that? That you could it's, kind of have such a sway on the work of uh, I don't know what acclaimed to do. AAA developers? I don't know what to do with this power now. It's a lot of power to ha wield, right? Like, it's it's terrible. And then uh, the developers of uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I've heard of it. They basically told me that the, the whole game was my idea. Really? They were like, we, were, <laughs> we weren't going to have the characters like shoot anyone. They were just going to be... Uh... Director of The Last of Us came up to me and was like, I based that entire game on one of your live journal entries. And That's I was amazing. like, wow. That's amazing. It does was it get, wonderful. Does it get tiring being responsible for so much within the industry? Oh, it sure does. Yeah. So, you know, you, we've, we've both made video games that star geometric shapes. You to slightly more success than me. You got mm -hmm. a PlayStation Plus deal. Meanwhile, I got told I was going to get a PlayStation Plus deal and then didn't. You didn't get one. Not bitter about it. You don't sound bitter. I mean, yeah. I mean, my life would be slightly different now, but not that much different. Um... And you made a game called John Wick Hex. Yes. My game Video Ball featured the uh, the, the the voiceover announcer was Jen Frank, who did the voiceover announcement oh, from she's awesome. Super Hexagon. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's brilliant. And also the game I'm working on right now, which will be announced formally soon, is called Truck Heck. So okay. we've, we're making we're pretty much making the same. Our careers are on the same path. Yeah, we we, we exist on a continuum. You've got Hex. I've got Heck. Truck Hex will be Truck Heck Two. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty close, right? No, yeah, you should absolutely feel that way. So the, this game is hexagons. The character is moving on hexagons, but you can't see the hexagons. That's right. Where did that choice come from? 
because it looked terrible with hexagons on the floor. <laughs> it was we were genuinely like we were we were genuinely like we had like yeah hex grid drawn on the floor, and we were just struggling so bad to make it like look in any way good with the environments to make it not look like to make it not look like civilization awful. in a room exactly. <laughs> Which and the problem with rooms is lots of right angles, so immediately that looks terrible. Yeah, and then uh, and then I played BattleTech, and I didn't have to worry about that problem anymore because Invi invisible hexes because BattleTech does this this whole dots on the floor thing. It's like okay guys, we solved that problem. So thank, can thank you, you paradox? It's so to, to wrap this up, can you, can you, I'm going to ask you to exit and can you start a new game afresh mm -hmm. on this is, can we just explain what this is here? Yeah. Expedited mode. You will have only five seconds to choose your next action. I have not played this so trepidatious am I to have Try to it. think as quickly as John Wick. Now John Wick would think, uh, he would think a lot more quickly than every five seconds, clearly. Clearly. But you're putting the player on more of a on more of a level with John Wick here. You're putting a heavier burden well, on the player. Yes. Five seconds to make a decision. We've just seen you make, how many decisions do you estimate you just made so far on this uh, on this stream? stream here in the hot seat? I don't know, like a couple hundred, something like that, maybe? A couple hundred something decisions. Something like that, yeah. let's say that, let's say that. You're making a lot of decisions. Yeah. And uh, I would say some small, some large, but no, they're all about the same size. You're making a lot of decisions that are, every decision has a lot of weight on it, mm. except the, Sometimes the weight decision feels uh, a little. So we did that. It feels luxurious, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Little, You're taking a moment. Less weight on it. Yeah. It feels a little. Oh, I like this. Uh, that parallax. This very Metal Gear Solid kind of. Uh, I put that parallax in everything. It's also because all of this is 3D, so we just needed to show that off. We realized if we didn't have that, it just looks like an, an image. It's like it looks people like, don't looks realize like, how clever we're being. It looks like an image comic book, as I said on my. That's very. That's today. massive praise. Thank it looks you. like image comics. Uh, I appreciate yeah, I like that. It. I appreciate that. Yeah, we've uh, done a lot of work. A guy called uh, Dick Monday came up with this uh, this very cool renderer that kind of it's a heck of a name. Puts, it's a great name, right? Strong name. It's a strong name. It's a name that commands respect. Wish I had a name that sounded a little bit less like a guy who lives off beefaroni in the basement. <laughs> Whatever my name sounds like. Have you ever had beefaroni? I, the beefaroni hasn't made it across the pond to my country yet. I have actually. I had beefaroni as a small child, and I recall its flavor. With uh, with abandon. Five seconds. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. It's real. The ready. timer starts moving once the game it's, starts. It's gonna start now. Oh my lord. Oh, this is hilarious. So it's speed chess. Where'd the idea for this come from? Speed chess. From speed chess? <laughs> it literally? Yeah, so what happens is if the timer runs out, it just adds a little weight action. So you've got a little time there. Yeah. So it'll pop a little weight action there, which obviously if you're surrounded by enemies is bad. Yeah, yeah, because that's the difference between a shot firing off and uh Two shots hitting, basically. So it throws. we have a gun throw right here on this nice second try. confrontation. Take down. Custom handgun. So yeah, you have no time to think. It's great. But it was it was it came out of us trying to think about because we wanted to put in a hardcore difficulty mode for those who because we knew there'd be strategy players who wanted that and yeah. rightly so. But um. There was this thing. Whew. There was this thing where we didn't want to make just the yeah. enemies more bullet spongy. We wanted to actually make it interesting. So this was something that was high pressure. Yeah. This is Nick and Alexander Slowinski in the chat there judging me as I as I rush through this. I'm trying to stay cool. It's all yeah, good. this is great. I was going to ask you a series of increasingly ludicrous John Wick trivia questions. Do it during this uh, stream, though. I, I'm uh, gonna I'm gonna get them all wrong, but let's yeah, do it. Yeah, I'm just actually kind of more interested in watching this because i i would love to play or at least think of myself as the sort of person who would play through this full game this way now i uh you know that's the thing is as you get better it does get faster like we've we've i you know definitely if i wasn't doing an interview it, it's not quite real time but you can get through at a reasonable pace yeah it, it looks bandage. it's very brisk and a nice refreshing pace it looks fun it doesn't look uh so i actually I actually started playing Civilization, sort of speed chess style, years back, and I, I can't not play Civilization fast now. When I play Civilization, I, I force myself to make decisions usually within about 30 seconds, and I think that's uh, I never I never dwell on anything. I just do everything I can as quickly as I can, and kind of let the game play out like an ant farm. So I feel like this is a, this is made sort of for me. That's my hope. Is it? It kind of becomes its own challenge. Should be interesting to see people. I'm looking forward to seeing some like speed runs of this at some point. It's very conducive to a stream. If someone becomes a mm -hmm. a true master of this game and can 
Actually, I hope it's quite a good streaming game generally, just in terms of, you know, you can always take a pause if you need to explain something to the audience, reply to someone in chat. I think it actually works quite well for streaming, hopefully. We'll see. see yeah, strategy games it. in general. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was saying yesterday that I think, uh, when I first heard the announcement of the Google Stadia, I thought... Yeah. Uh, you know what they should do is there should be a whole bunch of XCOM clones on the stage. We oh, should yeah. get a whole bunch of real AAA because that lag's going to be a tiny problem. Mm-hmm. At, a tiny problem at least for for a lot of people. Like I don't want to play Call of Duty on that. I want to. I I think uh, it would be real nice if this caused a, an enormous renaissance in tactics games. And I noticed I couldn't help noticing that your game is a uh, is your game coming out on the Google Stadia. Uh, we've got it on Epic Store right now, and I don't think we've uh, announced anything further for this time. I tried to trick you. That was really that. good journalism. Tried to trick. No, you went for it, and I respect I wanna, that. I and you waited what... until you had me on the uh, on the intense <laughs> version of my game. That's great. Just wanted to know if there was a if there was a Google Stadia version. So, just keep going. Let's see. Let's see how. Let's see if you can. You want me to get boss. through Chinatown in in speedrun mode? You're so. going downtown to Chinatown. Take down costs. You get a little bit of that. There you go. You got him. This game's good. Yeah, it's real good. And this, I really, uh, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to go down to Chinatown with this mode. Oh, it's just magnificently, briskly fast. It's pretty much an action game at this point. As you get better, yeah, and you start to also you pick up at like I'm not looking at the timeline at all because you get a sense of how long things take. You get like a, you just get a sense for the game. Um, and the speed at which it plays. So I always tell people that when they play a, a, a racing game, even if they're not a, a racing game player or any kind of a car aficionado or a, a gear a gear monger, as I believe they call themselves. I've heard you're a monger. <laughs> yeah, if, even if you're not like a car person, I recommend everybody force themselves to play car games on manual transmission. It was not necessarily harder, but just something that makes you more mindful. And I feel like I kind of feel like a doofus for not making my first play of this game just on this mode. Just force me to make decisions. It's a pretty intense first play. I wouldn't recommend that. I, I, I kind of, uh, I mean, I can never go back. I can never go back and play the game for the first time again. But I feel like, uh, I feel like at the very least I'm going to play through this level a couple of times no. on this mode. Just to try and refine those skills. Yeah, because making decisions fast, while not always what you want to do, it's not recommended for like neurosurgeons, right? No, it's, right. It's not technically not how you want to do that, but uh, like it, it's it's kind of uh, for something so frivolous as a video game. How dare you? I mean, let's face it, you're not you're not making money to play this game. Well, I mean, maybe. I mean, I'm making money if you play this game. Yeah. I, okay. So there's money being made by somebody, and the game <laughs> being played by somebody, possibly somebody else. You actually did make money to play it yourself. Anyway, this game is likely not a, a six-figure career in and of itself for anybody. Something is frivolous. Not this time. Not this time. Let's not say frivolous. Let's say luxurious. Yeah. It's a luxury. This is a luxury video game. Among video games, which are I consider luxuries in general. For something so luxurious as a video game, you might as well just bask in the the beauty of making lots and lots of mistakes in like rapid succession. I think that's the. I mean, that's how I play strategy games generally. Like, yeah. I think you can definitely get too caught up in trying to make the perfect choice. And I think as well, that's part of the the John Wick thing. Is there's always going to be some randomness. There's always going to be some danger. You know, you see him get hurt in the movies. So yeah, you know, obviously you you try and figure out how to balance that in a game context that it doesn't feel unfair. But the odd forced unforced error is, I think, part of what makes these these worlds fun. It's great. This is good. You're you're all the way. You're boss. I'm nearly it. there. Let's see if I can finish this. Arcade style. I'm gonna bandage for chat because Four I play I play today. dangerously. One of the uh, one of the uh, you can you earn names as you play levels, so you can. Uh, oh, I love those. Yeah. So so one of them is so to become the Bubba Yaga or Bubba Yaga. Sorry, I always mispronounce it. It's uh, <laughs> which should have been a rapid fire question. Bubba Yaga. Right. To get to get that, you have to complete the entire game without using any bandages. So I've gotten very used to completing levels. Baba Yaga, more levels. like bandage, no, sir. That's gr- that's, that's brilliant. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I tried to think of something. You're a professional writer, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I've written that's great. a lot. That's great. I've written a lot of words. It shows. No, I think I've, I think the actual word is uh, typing. <laughs> <laughs> I've typed a lot, everybody. 
I got my technique down. So this game, yeah, I uh, I pitched someone here in the office as it's like it's like Hitman Go, the arcade game. Is how I pitched it to someone who I knew liked Hitman Go, mm -hmm. right? So just you know, so we're talking about a strategy game, one character, not a squad, not a team, no leveling up. There's sort of some some buffs you can purchase, no leveling up, opportunity. No, you don't learn skills. You don't greatly enhance your skill set. You don't in, not in terms of uh, in game, but I think you get better obviously as you play. For sure. So what would we call you? Yeah, the skill set is you. Yeah. So you're, what, you're the difference. He'd be great if you weren't playing. So one one practice uh, that they have that I like in the Japanese game industry is when they release a game, there's always a. Uh, there's always, let's watch that replay. There's always a compound genre name on the back of the box of a Japanese game. Where, uh, the most famous example is Devil May Cry was released as stylish hard action. Hmm. So what would the compound genre name for this game be? Well, we've been calling it Timeline Strategy. Oh, I'm into the mic. We've been yeah. calling it uh, Timeline Strategy is the- Timeline is Strategy. The, the publisher approved marketing copy. That's good. That's all right, right? Because you play it on the timeline, it's strategic, it's not real time, it's not turn-based, it's all playing out on that timeline, which feels a bit specific. So as a, as a person who has been in the last year offered a, a job in the marketing field, let yeah. me tell you my name. Do it. Hero Strategy. Hero Ars, oh, because it's the one character, so you're kind of playing off of that? Or, or we could that... say Heroic Strategy. Because it's, but the heroic refers to the one character, is that what that yeah, comes from? Yeah, yeah. That makes Something sense. like that. I like that. Maybe, no, heroic, tactical, ta like heroic, heroic tactical strategy. Heroic tactical strand strategy. Strand strategy. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a strand yeah. game. It's a strand game. Strategic hexagonal action. People are saying <laughs> strategic hexagonal action is pretty good. So, another question I had is, what was Keanu Reeves doing while you made this game? <laughs> <laughs> what was he doing? Was he just chilling somewhere? He was, he was making the third movie in the franchise. It's quite yeah. a lot of work for him. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. You know what game you should make next? Go for it. Is uh, Judge Dredd strategy game? Judge Dredd. Lean so, into my Englishness just, and just make put, it happen. Put Dredd in here. Just put Dredd in Get there. Get Carl Urban. So like literally go for the uh, what was the was it just it was just Dread. Dredd wasn't it the movie the kind of raid like kind yeah, of you yeah. know if that movie yeah. had come out like a year earlier w or a year earlier or a year later do you think it was just too close to the raid? I think I think well it, it wasn't just too close it was the climate. I'm just yeah. going to use the word climate for no, no tangible reason. <laughs> it was it was just the climate at the time. Yeah. I feel like if it would have arrived closer to stuff like Deadpool and uh, Logan, and, mm -hmm. uh, just like slightly like a hair closer. Yeah. I feel like we'd be up to our eyebrows in sequels for that thing. Love that movie. Mm -hmm. But I also love John Wick and John Wick Two. What's your what's your name? I got Leighton, Leighton. which is the, the fire. fiery serpent. Wick moves quickly and completes his task in as little time as possible. Well, you can't spell quick without, no. You can't say quick <laughs> without also saying wick. John Wicked, guy's bad. He is. And uh, I believe that's all we need to have time for today. I would sit here and just watch you play this whole game because uh, it's gorgeous and it's wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate that. It is mathematically beautiful. It is crisp. It is refreshing. I was gonna rhyme that with something. I can't. That's good. No, I was, I was, I was with gonna... you. I was, there's like a tear welling up in my left eye. It's crisp. Just a single tear, just just rolling down the cheek right now. Like I said, the the uh, the misconception is that a person who makes videos about video games or plays or writes about video games plays video games, quote unquote, for a living. Mm. Quote unquote, quote plays video games for a living. Unquote. Dude, yeah, you gotta get those quotes in the right place. Quotes with yeah, my fingers. Yeah, that's good. Though, really, in truth, I play about fifteen games for about twenty minutes each, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, like every other day, and. For sure. uh, uh, very few of them make it onto the list of games that I will actually play at home. Mm -hmm. So I will. Play you will. This has made it onto the uh, onto the list. Other other recent entries on that list are uh, Control. That's a great game. Yeah. So Control is on there. It's beautiful. We could go through more games on the list, or we could just say goodbye. Goodbye, chat. What would you like to say as a parting parting words? Well, obviously they should go and buy the game. Obviously. How much is it and where is it? It's $20. A, a mere, mere $20. 19.99 US dollars. It is actually 19.99. I will get in trouble with Alexander if I say that wrong. $19.99 um, on the Epic Store. 
So, in other words, 19.99 U.S. dollars That's right. wherever games are sold on the Epic, on the Epic store. store. The places games are sold within the Epic Store, which is the Epic Store in fairness. <laughs> yeah. but. The only game Epic, the only place Epic Games <laughs> Store games are sold. Anyway, thank you very thank much you. for coming to Kotaku.com headquarters. That's been fun for hunkering in the Goblin Bunker, as we mm, call it. It's a good bunker. Yeah, these goblins are kicking around, rooting up the trash, just throwing trash everywhere. We're gonna have to get them out of here. Thank you for coming on, Mike Bithel. Come by again sometime. I shall. Next time you're in New York. And enjoy the rest of your John Wick reality tour. You're going on a John Wick reality tour? Is that what you're doing? Reality tour? You're like going to a place that occurred... Aren't oh, you, I have. I have been going. Are, are, I have been tweeting pictures. You're going to go there, and then I'm you're going to tweet pictures. I'm going to tweet some pictures from another John Wick location that somehow I've managed to get access to. Yeah, I'm going to do that later, or maybe tomorrow. What did you do? You called I'm them tell up. You, where. you called them. You know, I, we won't tell people where, but you called them up, and you were like, "What's up?" Uh, I totally did. Yeah. I made. I'm making John Wick the video game. Can I just check this out this place? It's a perfect description. No, this is exactly what I did. Yeah. Did you, totally did that. Did you put on like a John Wayne slash Harrison Ford accent so they believed you when you said dude, you were a dude, game you, developer? You, you underestimate the power of the English accent. Just I'm generally. making a video game. You, you just you sound uh, so much smarter than anybody in America. It's amazing. It's it's so useful. It's yeah. So useful. Oh my it's a god. Gift. I wish I sound, occurred as a sounding intelligence anybody. I just walk in and go, uh, you got uh, donuts at the donut shop <laughs> and I can just see them press on a button under the counter and I'm like ah oh, man oh I'm I'm sorry I just wanted a, do- a d- d- donut like that and they're just yeah. like instantly there's just ambulances just crashing into the front of the building they're like where's the guy and then I get tased and it's, yeah. that's that's what my accent's like <laughs> when I when I turn off this 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 people say I sound like Batman on these streams that's only because I can hear myself I don't want to hear how I really talk you're, y'all are never going to hear how I really talk. Never. Keep the mystery. Yeah. I'm not going to let you know what it sounds like when I'm just like walking down the street with my popcorn and my and my coffee. I just carry a bag of popcorn on the street. It's never, you're never going to know. You're never going to know. Nobody's ever going to know. All right. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Thanks for showing up. Um, we'll let you get back to your day. And I'm just going to continue sitting here mm. in the dark. With my sunglasses. Can on. I leave? Or well, we can stay you together. Can, you can you can stay here stay if together. you want. It's I'm good. just gonna I'm gonna light up Instagram, check out my stories. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, thanks thanks for watching everyone. Um I was born stupid. However, I will not die hungry video games forever. Kotaku.com, the goblin bunker, signing off. Goodbye. It's not my real sign out. I, I stretched it a little bit. But you know why not? Goodbye.